Hey everyone, Sam Crossway is back yet again and this time around I have uh, this new update regarding two infos of s some certain things that have been going on for the last couple of weeks now that I was actually meant to do separately but I decided to um, put into one video anyway because because I am actually trying to do a bit of a catch up on some of my videos that I've been doing and I've been trying to relay them at least one at a time though, uh, like I did with my Black Widow and Supergirl video before, but I decided to uh, just give it a rest and do individual videos one at a time later on throughout the couple of weeks. So I thought I'd just do it this time and just um, give out what I got before I carry on with any other videos that I've got on my mind. The first thing I wanted to catch up on for this video is more feedback regarding the upcoming third MCU Spider-Man film. And just recently, we have gotten confirmation that, according to Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are unlikely to appear in the third MCU Spider-Man film. Yeah, Tom Holland has officially denied that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are going to be appearing in the third MCU Spider-Man film. But is he telling the truth though? Because as far as some of the internet are aware, Tom Holland is occasionally known for spoiling his own films and can never once keep the information to himself though. And regarding that, the only thing we know about the film itself is its release date. We still hadn't got any trailers or the official title for the film yet, which we can actually gather is a good thing. For the meantime though, because apparently they decide to hide all important information from Tom Holland himself so he doesn't go around spoiling the film for us though. Like he has occasionally done for most of his other Marvel films though. Like Avengers Infinity War for example, where he entered a crowded theatre with Benedict Cumberbatch before they were going to see the film and he was like, I'm alive! Not knowing that the audience have not seen Avengers Infinity War yet. <laughs> The Amazing Spider-Man? More like the Amazing Spoiler-Man, am I right? But he did manage to cover things up shortly after though. So I reckon someone behind the scenes told him something different regarding the film's plot. They probably did confirm that the Spider-Verse will be taking place in Spider-Man 3, but they decided to not to say anything to Tom Holland. So they decided to tell him that it's not true. That it's not going to be a big crossover after all though. But that doesn't mean it's not likely to take place though. That doesn't mean that we won't see Andrew Garfield and Toby Maguire popping up into this film. I mean we already have Jamie Foxx as Electro and, and Alfred Molina as Doc Ock coming back. So surely this is going to be a Spider-Verse crossover so we're already expecting that anyway though. Since we all believe that is the plot of Spider-Man 3. Also, to be honest, even though I've come to actually agree with the idea, I think Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield should pop up into this film. Because, though I was having trouble trying to decide which of the Spider-Man franchises I should probably stick with into my Marvel collection, I decided to stick the Sam Raimi films with the first Amazing Spider-Man film and add in Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home as, as a sort of tie-in so that each of these films has a different villain popping up in them. But I decided to leave out The Amazing Spider-Man 2 because I kind of want to pretend it didn't exist though. Even though I am still making The Amazing Spider-Man 3 at the moment, I'm just a bit slow with the script at the moment though. I was just trying to figure out what to do with it at the time though. So yeah. It's just um, when, when these films happen though, I, I, I didn't know what to do with them really though because um, I decided to believe The Amazing Spider-Man is Spider-Man 4 coming after the Sam Raimi trilogy because it has a new villain, the Lizard, in it. So I thought it would rather take place there though. So the fact that we might actually get this crossover might be worth the excitement though. Even so for the fact that Jamie Foxx is reprising as Electro. 
and that he might probably be the main villain. Even though we we were kind of expecting Craven, who is now getting his own solo film, which kind of raises a lot of questions, but at least we got what we're looking forward to, though. Okay, so with that out of the way, there's another thing that I've been willing to catch up with that has also been coming about recently, though. The fact that Gina Canaro has been fired from the Mandalorian TV series. Actually, I'm not really that shocked about that as much as I was about Johnny Depp being fired from Fantastic Beasts 3, but... Why? Well, regarding I barely even watch The Mandalorian, I feel like it doesn't really make that sense all that much though, because um, I wouldn't really mind if she actually did stick around though, but dis despite the demands from fans being all in agreement that she should be fired from The Mandalorian, I really don't see what direction that should be going now in that some stage. I really don't see that much of all the hubbub that's been going on about that. I really don't know. I mean, there have been numerous times where actors have been dropped from TV projects before, like Kevin Spacey, Robert Downey Jr. all that. But with The Mandalorian, however, why? It's only, it's only just got to my attention recently that I would actually do actually a bit of a catch-up on why she was fired from The Mandalorian, though. And fans are actually requesting for Lucy Lawless, who is best known for her TV series role as Xena the Warrior Princess, to replace her in the role of Cara Dune. And regarding I don't actually do a lot of extensive research about certain things that are taking place, I might be able to take a look at some speculations as to why she was being fired. And on this recent website called The Hollywood Reporter, it says here about that the, the Mandalorian star Gina Canaro has been fired among social media controversy. And further down along it says that Gina Canaro will not be returning to the Mandalorian or the Star Wars galaxy after sharing a post on social media implying that being a Repub Republican Republican today can be like being Jewish during the Holocaust. Gina Canaro is no longer employed by Lucasfilm and there are no plans for her to be in the future. And further along, I believe there's something a bit more important. There seemed to be quite a campaign going on as the rest says on Wednesday, the hashtag Fire Gina Canaro was trending live following an Instagram post from the outspoken controversial actor and former mixed martial artist was met with severe backlash. The post has soon been deleted, but screenshots were widely shared by users on social media who called for her being fired from the hit Disney Star Wars show. And there's something else I just looked at a while ago as well though. It says here that last November she had issued contentious tweets in which she had mocked the mask wearing amid, amid the novel coronavirus pandemic and another of which she falsely suggested voter fraud during the during the 2020 presidential election. Yeah, I, I actually had a speculation about that though. I thought it might have been something to do with Donald Trump though. Because, um... I actually thought that was actually mainly the reason why she was fired though. She made a comment about Donald Trump, which actually occurred at least a couple of weeks before all the fans started to protest and request for her to be fired. But even what it says down here about the fact that she was causing drama on set, which brought among some concern to the producers, particularly John Favreau, might of course have something to do with that though. I mean, it's a lot of information, but surely I'm starting to at least get some of that a lot anyway though. 
I've not actually seen the Mandalorian, but believe it or not, I actually kind of don't want her to go, though. I actually don't really want her to to leave, though. Even if the show has to go on, though. But at least we still have Baby Yoda and all that, though. Yeah. Even if it might be considered that her exit probably won't really affect the show one bit, though. Well, as far as the producers are concerned, though. But did the fans really need to be that savage about it, though? I mean, what was their deal anyway? Well, we know what their deal is now, because... I mean, even if that's the point, it should have been the producer's decision whether or not to fire her. But why did the fans have to get involved? Well, unless you are working on social media, you're definitely likely to get sensitive about something that's about to take place. I know I am because I'm working on it at college, but I don't really get that much into detail about certain things like something like that online because I don't know, I don't really know of a website that has that kind of thing like that though. But I'm mainly working on social media to get a certain job that might be able to benefit and actually learn from it what I can do to go the distance, you know? Alright, so that's all it for this video so far though. Do you think Tom Holland has been absolutely honest that there is no Spider-Verse happening in Spider-Man 3? And what do you think of Gina Canaro's firing from The Mandalorian? Those seem to raise a few questions for me though, but what do you guys think? If you got anything of concern regarding those two subjects, put your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll be able to look back and answer them and I'll be back again soon with another video. See you later.